Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm bringing you a very quick project that I've created for my latest release with Paper Artsy in January 2018 using my ESC11 stamp set and the coordinating stencil PS094 that I've designed for them. You can find these stencils and stamps available at my Etsy shop. See the link in the description section below. Okay, let's get started. For this project I'm going to use Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to stamp with them. If you know a little about them, they have some pigment part and some dye part. We are going to stamp with them and then we are going to smudge the ink. The part that can be smudged is the pigment, but the dye stays and perfectly captures all the detail from the stamp, so you cannot smudge it. Only the pigment will move and that will create like a very nice aura, if you want to call it that way, around the stamped image. So I'm going to repeat the same with the different images. You could mix different inks to get different colors on your piece of paper, but I'm just sticking to vintage photo. It's a super quick, super fun and super nice technique. And if you stick to the vintage photo, then you get this sepia look. With another sponge dauber, I'm adding a little bit of anti-cleanin on part of the card. And then some walnut stain on the borders. If the borders are darker, then your eyes will pop into the center of your card. So it will frame it very nicely. These oxides are opaque. So if you don't like a color, you just need to apply another layer on top and it will cover it. And now it's time for activating the ink. You just need to add some water, some droplets. So I'm applying that with a spritzer by pressing little by little so then I get big drops to fall into the ink. And then with the heat gun, I'm just heat setting those and making them dry. Every drop is like bleach with this ink. And it also gives you this chalky finish that the Distress Oxides have. Once I'm happy with all the distressed look, I'm going to add a little bit more of walnut stain on the borders of my card. And then I'm ready to move on to the grunge paste. I'm applying it through the stencil. First, I'm moving it around very much so it becomes fluffy. And then I'm making sure that I apply a thin layer and that it's completely flat. I can then heat set that so I don't smudge it and it becomes dry. It's perfectly okay and it will not blister. That is great about using grunge paste. And now I'm going to add a stripe of those screws. And I'm heat setting them too. And the only thing left is applying a little bit of walnut stain ink on top of the grunge paste because I wanted to make the screws a little bit darker. And that's it, I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a thumbs up and if you want to leave me a comment, I would really appreciate it since they make my day. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video, bye!